What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a slight transition like Nine Headache and it basically consists out of three key things. So the first one is movement, the second one is shakes, blurs and warps and the last one is overlays. So if you just follow along with this tutorial then you'll surely be able to make the transition at the end of this video. So you just want some clips that match movement wise so then the transition will just be a lot easier. Alright then the stop layer here is just some CC, you don't need that for now but it's just to make the end result look better. And then I got some references here so you also don't need these layers so i disabled them as well so the first thing you want to do is go to your first clip Control alt shift plus y and this is a really long keybind but you can also just right click here new and then no object now you can just cut it up like this and make it the same length so here you want to link it so select your original clip and then select this thing here, hold it and drag it onto the null object. Now you'll see if we scale it, for example, our clip will move with it. Or if we move it around, it will also move with it. And then I forgot to mention one thing, and that is that I already added CC Repetile on the clips. So this is basically like motion tile, if you're more familiar with it. Um, so I just set it to 200, everything, and then unfold. And then as you could see before, you just get some extra room to play around with the position. So for this here, we're going to start in the middle and then press P. And then we're going to separate the dimensions. So right click on position, separate dimensions. And then here on the X position, because we're going to move it horizontally, you can just animate it and then go to the end. So I like to set my ending keyframe here instead of here. And then we're just going to move it to, let me just check. Yeah, to the left basically. And as you can see, due to our uh, motion tile or our CC repeat tile, we can move it around a little bit more. Then you want to select your keyframes, press F9, and go to the graph editor and here you can just make a graph that looks like this so it just goes slow and then faster and faster all right perfect now the second thing is to do it with the second clip too so Control alt shift plus y and now let's cut it to the right length and here you can link it of course don't forget to link it because if you don't do it and then do your position and scaling then it will basically just not move around with your clip and if you then want to link it then it will just all be messed up so it's better to just redo it at that point. So now we're going to position again, separate dimensions, and then here again on the X, we're going to move it from the left here, not too much, and then a little bit farther than the center, we're going to, oh, not the Y one, we're going to move it like this. And it kind of depends when I tried it before, here you get this kind of mirroring effect, which didn't look very great in my opinion. As you can see, the clouds kind of intersect and it doesn't really look great. So I just kept it very subtle here. And now you can select the keyframes, F9, and go to the graph editor. And here you just want to make a graph that firstly goes fast and then slow, like this. All right, beautiful. As you can see, our movement from the left to the right is way more accentuated now. And we can just move on to the next step, and that is shakes, blurs, and warps. All right, so we're going to start off with the blur. Usually I would use Blur Cloud, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to do it the manual way. If you want to check out my blur plugin, then you can just go to the first link in the description down below, and you'll just be redirected to my website where you can buy all sorts of stuff. So let's just create an adjustment layer, Control alt plus y Then you can go a few frames back, like this, cut it here, and then a few frames forward, like here. And now let's also make it orange to make it more uh, visible. All right, and now what I also like to do is press the asterisk key. Uh, it's like a little star key on your numpad. And it just adds a marker. So if you happen to move it around, you can just find it back again uh, where the impact is. Or you can also just copy it and move it to other places in a very easy and simple way. So we're going to add an effect called directional blur. And then here, the first thing you want to do is set it to 90 degrees because our transition goes horizontal. If you have a slight transition that goes up or down, you want to set this to zero. And you could even choose like values in between if you have a slight transition that goes diagonally. Um, but yeah, for now it's 90. And then the blur length, we want to set it to 80. So we do want a lot of blur. And then we can also animate it with this icon here. All right, then press U so we can see our keyframes. Go to the beginning, set it to zero, go to the end and set it to zero as well. Then here you can just select the keyframes, press F9. And then um, we kind of want to tweak it around. So this is not an exact graph. You'll have to look at this uh, for yourself, but I'm just going to teach you what things to look for specifically. So for example, if you would do it like a shake like this, very steep beginning, then we already got a lot of movement here, but there's no blur. And that doesn't really make sense. If you would add like RSMB, which is a motion blur plugin, it would already add some um, motion blur to this. But in my opinion, it's way better to do the blurs manually. Uh, so what you can do to fix it is just make it less steep. As you can see, we get more and more blur. And we can also drag this one. So you kind of just want to find a good spot. 
as you can see now it moves and we already got some blur which is perfect then here um usually i'll do a graph like this because then the blur is like a little bit more noticeable if you also make it very steep then it just goes away instantly and that usually doesn't look great so you want something like this also drag this a little bit back so as you can see it gradually just removes the blur and now it's way better as you can see it's way smoother so that's perfect now we can go back to our main comp and then we can add a shake for the shake we want to do the exact same thing Control alt plus y to add an adjustment layer then we can go three frames back and cut it here all right now here we'll add a shake then set the frequency to 3.5 and this is more of a slower shake uh, which fits 9 headache style more then the next thing you want to do is go to the x shake and here we're going to set it to 40 and 80 so these are basically our amplitudes as you can see the random amplitude 40 it's just like it will shake randomly on the x-axis and then the wave amp is basically uh, a, a more consistent version i guess you could say that uh, so we want more of that so the shake is a little bit more consistent and then the frequencies you can also tweak them so for example for the consistent one you can set it to 0 0.6 so this will make it a little bit faster then go to the y shake here we want a little bit of the y shake too so maybe 35 and 80 and then we can set it to 0 0.6 as well so that's the frequency then go to the tilt shake uh, you usually don't want to use z shake i think it's kind of goofy i've heard about editors who use it in like flow edits but it's i don't know i, I never use it really so tilt shake and then set it to three so nine addict also uses a lot of tilt shake and then this one to two and then we can make them both faster so 0 0.6 and 1.1 now as you can see looks really bad but that's just because we didn't animate it yet what you can also immediately see is that there's kind of like this artifact here a simple way to fix it is just to drag your shake below your blur so the blur just covers everything then here you just want to change one more thing i set these reflect things to no because we already got the cc repeat tile, so you don't need to reflect it again and then we can animate the amplitude and there's also like a huge mistake that some beginners make and they just animate like multiple things for example the frequency as well or some things here but honestly you only need to animate the amplitude and if you just keep it at one here we keep it at zero in the beginning and then at zero at the end you just have to deal with the graph that goes from zero to one to zero again and that's very easy so definitely do it this way then select them all press f9 and then go to the graph editor and here for a shake you obviously want to make it more steep in the beginning we don't want to see a lot of it and then here on the clip where the shake is actually visible you do want to make it more noticeable so usually a graph like this yeah we can make it go down even faster all right that's beautiful um, now if you think your shake is a little bit too long you can also shorten it and then make sure to go to the graph editor again to check if if nothing like this happened for example because then it's really bad then the last thing you can do is also just change the seed so if you're just not happy with the shake but you think you can't really change around too many values anymore you just gotta like try out the seed and maybe you'll find one that looks good all right i like this shake uh, so we're going to keep it like this now the next thing is to add a warp so we're just going to select our shake layer Control alt plus y because we still want the blur to be above and then just cut it three frames before again and then do something like this so you don't want your warp to be too long as well all right and here you can add an effect called the warp it should be stock so everyone has it and then this arc thing here so the style you want to change it to fisheye uh, you can do a lot of warps you can do like a wave warp or a turbulent warp but for this tutorial we're going to use a fisheye one which basically just does this here so you want to animate it set it to minus 30 and then go to the beginning set it to zero go to the end and set it to zero as well then press u select all your keyframes f9 and go to the graph editor so here we'll just start off with a graph like this just really steep and as you can see it's not very noticeable it's honestly just barely there so how to fix this again with the blur you just want to make it a little bit more visible and noticeable by making it less steep so here it's gonna be hard because it goes very fast so just try to do it as much as possible like this and then here you can make it significantly less steep so something like this all right like this maybe okay so now it's like a little bit noticeable not too much you can also increase the at the bend or like in this case decrease it because we're kind of like inflating it so yeah for now i think i just like it when it's a little bit more subtle all right so this is it for our second step now the last step is to add some overlays so let's grab an overlay that i found and it's basically like a light leak you could also add some fire overlays which is really typical for nine headache style um, but for today 
I thought the fire wouldn't really fit that well, so I just grabbed myself a light leak. You can set the blending mode to linear dodge. So that always works great when you have an overlay with a black background. So let's find like the brightest point about here. And now as you can see, it just makes our transition complete. So let's enable our CC to see the full end result. And this is how you make a slight transition like 9 headache. Hopefully you've learned a lot. And if you did, make sure to subscribe. And if you want me to help you even more with After Effects, then make sure to go to the first link in the description down below. All right, bye-bye.